Hey guys, even here, and how about we start this video with the newest Rolly Winkler physique update, or maybe should I rather say body fat percent update. You cannot really see his entire physique, but you can see his legs. It's not exactly about body fat, but about those details that come up with lower body fat percent. He is not known for having great quad details. And about his hamstrings, they are coming together, they are gonna look great. I mean, he's already peeled in that region as far as glutes, pretty much the same thing. I mean, his glutes are not the thickest ever, but they are very good at this point, very lean. Now back to his quads with a slow motion, you can actually notice that he is getting detailed through his inner upper portion of the quad. So that's something that he was heavily criticized for, because his quads are big. The size is not the problem, but it is the condition, the details. I don't know if he's gonna have great details and separation even with the lower body fat, but let me tell you one thing. He's gonna be fighting Brandon Curry for that title, for the Mr. Olympia title. And if you compare their legs, Rolly is definitely gonna beat Brandon as far as leg department. So legs are not a problem for Rolly, I mean, that's for sure. But the better they are, the more dominant he's gonna look compared to Brandon. So it's gonna be a tough battle, that's for sure. I mean, it's gonna be uh, Rolly's legs versus Brandon's back. And we'll see, we'll see what is more important and who brings better conditioning and so on. But as for now, you can definitely notice that uh, Rolly is getting dialed in slowly, slowly. That's what I like to see. This year at the Arnold Classic, I mean, before the Arnold Classic, two weeks out, he was fat. And then he tried to get lean in two weeks. He did not succeed. This time around, he is taking his time. He's taking his time, he's dieting for weeks, for months now, and look at it, look at the, the hamstrings. Very lean, very separated, Phil Heath was known for having great hamstrings, but this is also looking very, very impressive. And guys, Mr. Olympia is not happening in 20 days, and these guys, these pros, are pushing the hardest in the last couple of weeks, so he's gonna be at his prime at this Mr. Olympia. I'm pretty sure he will be in his best conditioning ever. He knows, he knows very well. His crew, his team, they all know very well that he has, along with Brandon Curry, the biggest chances to win the Mr. Olympia and become one of the greatest ever, one of the Mr. Olympias. He's already known for having the biggest arms in the history of the world. I mean, look at his triceps, this is insane. And the thing is, it's all about conditioning at this point. So guys, even if he doesn't win a Mr. Olympia, he's gonna give us the show of his life. We're gonna watch a great Mr. Olympia, it's gonna be a great battle, probably between Brandon and Rolly. Whoever wins it, wins it, but it's gonna be an epic battle and it's gonna be a great Mr. Olympia, very exciting, because we have no idea who is gonna be next Mr. Olympia. Most people have Brandon winning it, some people have Rolly, the others are talking about Phil Heath comeback, Kai Green comeback, William Bonek winning it, and so on and so forth. Somebody else completely surprising us all, making big improvement and winning the show, but that's all not very likely. What is likely and what is uh, logical at this point is Brandon or Rolly. Third time finisher at the Mr. Olympia, now without second and first spot Olympia finishers from last year, or 2019 Arnold Classic winner. The reason why Brandon has probably bigger chances is because he beat Rolly at their last show at the Arnold, but that's because Rolly was way off, way, way off. He wasn't conditioned. He was fat, he was watery. At the Mr. Olympia this year, Rolly will bring his best ever. Brandon will probably do the same thing. And we're gonna see who is a better bodybuilder. What do you guys think? Tell me down below in the comment section. I already talked about this before, but I noticed another story from Big Ramy where his face starts to look very lean. And you guys know that this guy is not known for being conditioned. Even when the Mr. Olympia comes, even when he's competing, his face is not usually looking super dry. He's not known for being the, the, the driest bodybuilder out there. He's known for being the biggest bodybuilder. And right here, his face looks pretty dialed in. So he definitely is dieting. Now the question is, is he gonna try to get an invite at the Mr. Olympia? Maybe Badr Budai will hook him up somehow. Maybe he will actually compete. Or maybe he's prepping for another show after Mr. Olympia. Or maybe he's just trying to get a little bit leaner for the Mr. Olympia Expos. Since he's sponsored by a supplement company, he needs to be at the Expo and he doesn't want to look unimpressive. He wants to look somewhat impressive. I mean, he would always look impressive because he's a huge guy, but you know, he needs to show some 
separation and you know, some lower level of body fat. He cannot come like a chubby uh, off-season bear that he is <laughs> usually. So maybe he's just getting ready for that expo. He's just trying to look normal, to look nice. Or he's prepping for a show, Mr. Olympia or another post-Olympia show. What do you guys think? You also have a physique update of Brian Shaw. As you can see in the description of this video on his Instagram account, he says three weeks from the Mr. Olympia. I don't know about his body fat percent though. He did not get super lean at this point. But guys, you know, these pros, they get lean very fast. So he has three weeks to go. I think he will get lean and he will probably crack the top six at the Mr. Olympia. <laughs> Just kidding. For the unaware, this is Brian Shaw, the strong man. He is the strong man. But I think he had the great potential to be a bodybuilder. He does have very good shape. Very long muscle bellies and ability to, to pack a lot of mass, but he's very tall, so probably not. But hey, he won the strongest man. I mean, he is the world's strongest man, I think multiple times, I'm not sure though, but he definitely chose the right career path. He is definitely well suited for this sport. As you can see, he is enormous. He's a freaking giant, freak of nature. I mean, this guy is so big. I think these guys are pushing 400s. 400 pounds, even more probably. I mean, he's very tall. There are other strong men who have better physiques than him, but this guy is the world's strongest man. So for that reason, I think he could have been a good bodybuilder. Not a professional probably, but I think he has very long muscle bellies. Those arms are also very dominant for somebody who is doing strong men and powerlifting and not really having a separate arm day. He has very good arms. Imagine if he was training for bodybuilding. He would be good, that's for sure. But back to bodybuilding, or is it bodybuilding? <laughs> Zach King Khan posted this, I mean, he posted Kai's story and he says what people are getting ready for the Olympia, this guy is doing this for his fans. <laughs> and I really laughed because of this. So Zach King Khan, I mean, that's, that's how he is. He's so blunt with his comments about other bodybuilders. He has no filter and that's why you love him. That's why you love him, because he writes stuff like this. And I thought this was hilarious. And it sends a message. Kai, back to the stage, goddammit. But while Kai is playing with his Instagram filters, guys like Derek Lansard are getting ready to win some big competitions. So, Derek, most likely your 2019-2012 Mr. Olympia champion. With this back, who would complain? And with his completeness as well. So, if he comes shredded, and I'm sure he will, he doesn't really need to have super dialed in, sucked in conditioning. I don't think he really needs to be that dry because he is the most complete, the biggest bodybuilder on that stage and size does play a role at the Mr. Olympia. But I'm sure Derek will not miss the mark with the conditioning since he is well aware of his chances of actually winning the Mr. Olympia title. As I talked in the beginning of the video about Open Mr. Olympia, I said most people have a Brandon or Roy winning it, but some mention Phil Heath comeback, Kai Green comeback and some even mention uh, Sean Roden coming back. So, Sean Roden, at this point, at three weeks out, looks amazing. He is training very, very hard. Charles Glass is in the gym back with him. Somebody else is helping him do the work. You know, when Charles Glass is training his clients, he's doing half of the work. So, his employees are doing the same thing for Sean here. So, maybe Sean is lifting 30% of these dumbbells and somebody else is helping him to do the other 70%. But all jokes aside, um, Sean is definitely looking great. So, whatever he's doing, it's working. And will he be at the Mr. Olympia? Well, I mean, we signed a petition. We had a lot of signatures, but AMI is a huge organization and they cannot respond to their fans like that. They made a decision. It was probably a wrong decision, but it was made. And I don't think they will change it. And I'm very sorry about that. I'm, I mean, I make jokes about Sean Roden as far as his training with Charles Glass, but that's just fun. I mean, I love his physique. I mean, I'm not a huge fan. Like, uh, I wouldn't choose him in my top 10 of the greatest physiques or the greatest Mr. Olympias ever for that matter. But I love to see as many Mr. Olympia winners or great bodybuilders at that stage. So I would definitely like to see him on that stage. But bodybuilding, physique aside, if you talk about his personality, I also like him as a person. He seems like a very genuine, nice guy. Um, not very interesting, not interesting at all, super boring, uh, let me say that, very, very boring in personality, I mean, there is basically no personality about him, just a physique, but I love his physique, and uh, I love the fact that he won the Mr. Olympia with a great package, and I would love to see more talent in the Mr. Olympia, so I would definitely love to see him up there, although I don't think it will happen at this point. 
And guys, I know I'm criticizing these bodybuilders way too much and I'm nowhere near their level as a bodybuilder, but that's the point of my YouTube channel, saying whatever I think. And what I think, I said. I have no filters. If you guys like it, keep watching my videos, subscribe, like them. If you don't dislike them, unsubscribe, don't watch them anymore. I don't care. I'm just doing my thing. You can support me or you can move on and watch somebody who is always saying polite things about everybody and is never criticizing anybody and you guys know who I'm talking about. Maybe I don't have the right to talk about these open bodybuilders because they are much bigger than me uh, in terms of success and muscle mass but can I talk and I criticize these smaller classic physique guys? I guess I have more rights to do that. <laughs> Just joking. Anyways, uh, George Peterson right here has been doing some photos recently, a lot of them, because he is in shape. This guy is known for having great conditioning pretty much year round. He is known for eating burgers and fries like almost every day in his last final couple of weeks before his big shows, and he shows up probably in better conditioning than anybody. He did a couple of uh, photo shoots, and you can see right here that he looks amazing. You can hate his structure, but you cannot deny his muscularity, his matur maturity, and conditioning and you can say density, thickness, whatever. I mean, there is a lot of muscle, very well shaped, symmetry is there. It's just the structure, you know, the size of his waist compared to his shoulders, the, the, the roundness of his entire physique is there, but there is no great V taper or X taper, however you want to call it. So the structure, not ideal, but the level of muscularity, density and conditioning is really on point. So he's probably going to be up there in the top three, maybe even top two, depending on uh, conditioning of other guys, definitely a great physique, an impressive physique, phenomenal back, the best back in, in one of the best backs in the world right now, maybe not the biggest, not comparable to the open guys, but very well uh, conditioned and uh, shaped, amazing shape of his back and uh, very developed too, I mean, one of the best classic physique guys, not the best classic physique, I mean classic as an adjective, so in terms of being a little bit uh, smaller bodybuilder, uh, with a weight cap and longer trunks, he is a very, very good. Very, very good. But to win the classic physique Mr. Olympia, he would have to be a little bit better. And he would have to be at this level. I think this is your 2019 classic physique Mr. Olympia champion. I said it before and I'm gonna keep saying it until it happens. Because uh, look at this physique update of uh, Chris Bumstead. I mean this workout video, but you can see his physique. You can see his arms and this guy is known for having the worst arms up there and still he's able to dominate the stage to take second place while being off while being off and losing by only one point so as you can see right here he's getting shredded he's getting leaner every day he's rocking that mustache he's bringing the heat he's definitely bringing the heat i mean look at his arms imagine if he had arnold like genetics for arms his physique would be pretty much perfect he would just have to have a little bit better, a little bit denser back, but that's about it. And uh, I like his physique because it is very unique and because he has that freak factor. And he has very uh, thin skin. I don't know if this is genetic or he's simply getting very shredded, but he definitely does look dry. His skin looks paper thin. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing him winning the Mr. Olympia. As you can see, the top comment right there is <laughs> quite funny. So, you know, uh, Chris has a lisp. And he's joking about it, it's, it's all jokes, it's all fine. I mean, his body is perfect, he has that perfect face, like a freaking model. So if he even had perfect speech, he would be flawless. And you don't get that, you need to have a flaw. So that's his flaw, it's speaking flaw. But anyways, he's a great guy and I wish him all the best. And I want to see him in the Mr. Olympia. So, guys, thank you very much for sticking with me till the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching and for supporting me. If you want to see more content, subscribe to my channel. If you enjoyed this one, please make sure to like it. All the best, guys. Bye-bye.